Apologies for uh, the initial setup. So my name is Barbara Gallina and I'm Associate Professor at Manadalen University. And uh, in this project is Sprint One. And I have been working 20% uh, of my time. And it is about standards, assurance case, process, product aware, safe ops. So actually, uh, I, I had the opportunity to present a part of my work uh, in the context of a seminar and a workshop at the Software Center. And then I started the conversation with uh, Bosch, and uh, this is what originated uh, this uh, work. So uh, let me um, present the outline. I will present the context, the motivation, background, then the objectives for this uh, project, what we did uh, in Sprint 1 and uh, what uh, we plan to do next. So regarding the context, it is uh, populated by road vehicles. So Bosch uh, is uh, acting as a uh, uh, tire uh, one and uh, tire two, and uh, uh, they are interested in uh, working uh, uh, according to DevOps. But uh, since uh, the context, uh, the automotive domain is uh, highly regulated, as you can read there, and uh, standardized, uh, the idea is to understand how uh, to uh, solve the conflicts between uh, the disciplined way of working in uh, uh, the regulated sector and uh, uh, DevOps. So uh, which is also, if you read the standards, it's also a question of uh, um, solving conflicts between uh, developers and uh, the operational, so those uh, that uh, have to take care of the compliance. And uh, the uh, purpose of DevOps, according to some of the established definitions, is that uh, you want to reduce uh, the time between committing a change to a system and the change being placed into normal production. So it is all about changes here in the context of this project. So as we said, we start with ISO 26262. This was the interest of Bosch, and this was the interest with respect to their safe op. And uh, I was discussing with them, saying that it is not only ISO 26262. It is more because uh, Depending on the change that you do, depending on the item that uh, you want to deploy within the vehicle, then uh, you, you may expand the set of standards. So imagine that the tiny change is that you add a passenger. That is not a technical change. It's just that you have a passenger and the passenger is, for example, a kid. Hmm? And uh, then uh, you consider as a uh, uh, functionality, the functionality that actually here you have the button to close uh, uh, your uh, window. Mm -hmm. And that uh, brings in a lot of issues. In fact, we went through the history and uh, here nowadays uh, you would call this as a misuse, foreseeable misuse, and you will uh, bring in a sort of standard, okay? Then if you make another change, technical change, that uh, you uh, give the opportunity to close the window remotely uh, because you have included the connectivity, then you consider other standards in relation to cybersecurity. And then you consider uh, lots of other uh, documents uh, that are the UNHC uh, regulations. And uh, so, and of course, then you need to argue. This is a possible way uh, of arguing graphically, but you could argue also in English or in Swedish, as you prefer, uh, trying to explain that uh, the change that you made is still safe enough, is still um, cyber, uh, secure enough, etc. So uh, again, changes, changes at all levels regulation level, standards level, way of working level, because it's not only the uh, ISO 26262 life cycle that you have to take into consideration, but also the cybersecurity life cycle, the SOTIF life cycle, and many other life cycle, depending on uh, the uh, evolution of the standards. 
and uh, changes in uh, the way you justify your uh, assurance. So, based on the context, the motivation is uh, continuous. We need the continuous quality assurance. And uh, we are interested particularly in uh, continuous safety assurance with the interdependencies with other uh, dependability concerns. Uh, and uh, uh, initial focus on uh, uh, the uh, functional safety hazards analysis and risk assessment and the sortive hazards analysis and risk assessment. So having a criticality aware continuous design. Because this is the first step, I mean, OK, the first step is item definition, knowing what you're going to develop. But then if you don't have a proper HARA, uh, you will not be able to implement the safety, incorporate the safety in the design. So this is crucial. So uh, focus within this project is continuous change variability management. The background. Uh, that uh, uh, gave the opportunity to create this um, cooperation is the fact that I worked uh, in a European project called AMAS, I was technical manager, and uh, we had a work package that was uh, focused on uh, reuse, uh, cross concern reuse, also uh, reuse within different domains. And uh, the idea uh, within uh, this uh, uh, work package, but in uh, AMAS in general, was to take into consideration not only the technical aspect, so not only the product, the uh, parts that uh, compose the item, but also the process that uh, has been adopted to develop the product and the assurance. And here you don't see this dimension, but it is also the dimension of the standards. Hmm? So if you make a change here, there are ripple effects. So at Bosch, they were interested, as I mentioned, in uh, reasoning about how to uh, make DevOps evolve towards the inclusion of ISO 262 and reasoning about the changes. And when we talk about DevOps, they were interested also in considering field data, so having the feedback loop, which we were not focusing on within AMAS. So what uh, we did, um, is that we um, created this project in order to reason about not only the changes and not only ISO 26262, but also uh, laws, assurance cases, processes. And uh, to do that, we selected an item. I already uh, provided an anteprima. The item that we selected here is, uh, a, is the uh, window lifter. And uh, here we are visualizing only two windows, OK? And the, the, the crucial component is the switch. There are other crucial components. But we were reasoning about uh, the uh, variants that uh, uh, can be extracted uh, to represent uh, the window lift, and uh, more specifically, the window operated uh, system. And uh, uh, we went through the history, actually, of the development of this uh, uh, feature. And uh, we looked uh, into the regulations that uh, uh, were in place in the US, regulations that are in place in Europe and were in place in Europe, and uh, also the cases of suffocation that uh, happened due to the fact that a kid um, accidentally may um, push a button OK, and if it is not manual that uh, you have to keep on pressing, but it is just a uh, one touch and uh, the switch is not uh, conceived properly, then uh, you might uh, pinch the fingers. If this is the case that you only have the fingers in between uh, in the window pane or uh, it, there were cases in which killed were uh, children were uh, killed and even a mother was killed uh, by the child because of uh, the fact that there was this uh, um, unwanted activation of the switch. 
So uh, we looked into the type of switch, not only that uh, feature, and we made the analysis with respect to the implication. Implication at low levels, standards that are in place, process related implication, so how you should work, and the assurance case related impl implication, because uh, if you forget the uh, possible misuse, you will uh, forget the mm, life cycle that is related to SOTIF, for, for example. You will uh, consider that everything is uh, controllable and uh, you don't care. So, uh, and uh, we looked also into uh, Rasmussen model, the socio technical uh, system that Rasmussen has uh, mm, introduced where uh, you have different levels uh, and you should not only consider the uh, level at the company level, work level, but you should embrace a broader perspective where you have uh, the government that performs a judgment uh, and also and, uh, um, provides directions in order to develop laws and develop standards. Okay, so here we have uh, UNECE, we have uh, ISO 26, we have ISO 26, 262, for example. Uh, we have the company level at uh, uh, OEM. We have the company level at the tier one, tier two, tier three. We have the management. At this time, we can do the resolution because uh, we are managing, we are executing. So we uh, decide how we, wor we work. It's not only a question of uh, interpreting and uh, uh, providing guidelines at a high level at the company. Uh, we have uh, uh, staff here, the actors that we decide. We could even decide who was a tester expert there. We could even decide how the tester should work. OK, uh, and uh, then we have the technical uh, space where uh, the idea is that uh, we may have different prototypes and then we have the production and uh, at the production level we collect the field data. So what we did here is uh, providing a vision for uh, an automotive specific and extended socio-technical system. Uh, what I will not present because it is currently under uh, review is the um, detailed work of uh, extracting the information from uh, uh, the laws uh, and uh, we consider UNHCR 21, if I remember properly, and we consider also the US regulation, which is also implicated in the Tesla case, the most recent recalls in relation to the uh, window lift. And uh, we extracted the, mm, the features out of these uh, uh, laws not uh, the complete law, we, we consider a portion with respect to the technical variants that we were considering within the, the window lifter. And then uh, we extracted the, the features at the standards level in order to see, uh, OK, if I take, if I'm in this jurisdiction, if I'm in the US, what is that US wants and which is the implication of the selection of the way of working at, uh, at standard level? And what is not only on the way of working, but what is the implication from a technical perspective, which is the feature, the variant that should be selected, which is the switch that is required in this jurisdiction. So this is what we, we have been doing. So uh, uh, you have to think of a kind of feature diagram like specification, okay? This is only to visualize the problem. Uh, it's not that the idea is to use the uh, feature diagram in the future, but is to visualize the problem. We uh, also uh, submitted an invention report because uh, since we were brainstorming together, at some point we uh, had some ideas and it was new uh, in the context of the company, but it was not uh, sufficiently new in the broader context to justify a, a patent. Uh, then we extended these uh, mass results and uh, uh, the idea. So we submitted the publication. And for the future, uh, we want to reiterate on this and uh, incorporate the planned increments because I mentioned to you, uh, we worked mainly on the FUSA and on the uh, SOTIF. But of course, there is also the dimension and we do have identified the features for uh, the connectivity aspect which bring in uh, the cybersecurity. So expanding and reiterate by considering these increments. 
And as I was mentioning before, uh, the feature diagrams have been used in order to show, because we can easily grasp the feature diagrams, uh, the uh, interdependencies that uh, exist among the different features. However, in the future, the idea would be to uh, create ontologies. There is already work in, um, in place that uh, I did in the past, work in place that at Bosch they are doing. So uh, using uh, the semantic web, using shackle constraint language in order to uh, then uh, check these constraints that uh, uh, we have uh, extracted. This can be done also within uh, tooling support for uh, uh, feature diagrams. But uh, uh, the interest for scalability reason is uh, to move uh, towards uh, the semantic web. So this concludes the first uh, presentation. If you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, I will continue with the other tiny project. Uh, but so reasoning about uh, the different dimensions that uh, are uh, in, included uh, in uh, the safety 